Welcome back, everybody, to the Ocali Film Room. Chris Becker joined here by Sadiq Tuma. We're here to break down a few plays from the Oklahoma State 63-17 win over TCU. Kind of a surprising one, but we'll get right into it. First play here, scoreless still. One of the few times it was scoreless. 5.42 left in the first quarter, second and 10 for OSU. Uh, Spencer Sanders is going to take the snap, roll out to the right, and then throw back across the field to Bryson Green for a pretty big game, Sadiq. And a pretty interesting play. Sadiq, break it down for us. Yeah, a couple of things that work here. First off, um, you have Blaine Green lining up at Cowboy back. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Repeat, Blaine Green. Yeah. A wide yeah. receiver lining up there in that H-back position. You see him there on the left side. Um, with no Logan Carter on this play. A lot, of, a lot of plays this game, you saw Logan Carter and Blaine Green. Mm -hmm. But here's just the play design is superb. Uh, first off, let's say this. The offensive line for OSU, Spencer Sanders has obviously been so much better the past few games. The offensive line, I think... Spencer's only taken one sack in the past four games, three, four games, something like that. I believe three games. But either way, it's been tremendous I mean, decision-making, pocket presence, all those things. But here, this is the design, right? It's the moving the pocket, get a moving pocket, have all the routes running that way. And that's kind of what the defense sees. You know, you see that in football a lot, mm -hmm. right? So as we started out here, obviously it's going to... Um, you got Spencer here, you got whoever that is. <laughs> um, so yeah, you see it initially here, right? They mm -hmm. immediately start rolling out to the right. And all those wide receivers for OSU, Jaden Bray, I believe that's Presley and Tamar on the top of the screen. Uh, everyone starts rolling right. They're, they got out routes. You got uh, all these out routes. You got a dig route from Bray. Everything's going toward the right. Spencer's going toward the right. So you see all that motion going to the right. And then watch this TCU front. All six of them right here, right? All six of those guys in the box. All of them, they're going to start moving to that side too. And where does Spencer go? He goes from one hash to the other. So everything's going that way. The whole play side flows all going to the right. And then here's little Blaine Green, just not little, but <laughs> he steps out on a little screen. Watch the bottom of the screen here. Uh, you got the two linemen, I believe that's Godlewski and Cole Birmingham. There, can you come out for a screen pass? And you got Blaine here, Green here, right? And we mm -hmm. watch the left side of that line, including uh, Blaine Green, right? Those three guys. Mm -hmm. Watch them and watch how there's the flow. They're all going that way, you know, stepping back like it's pass protection. And then immediately Green just slips out. And right there wide open, and he gets down there. I mean, Cole Birmingham doesn't even have anyone to block right now. Yep. <laughs> and he goes down, and that's just, like, perfect play design. And, I mean, you watch it from this other angle as well, which we'll see in a mm -hmm. second. Um, sorry, rather. Um, it, yeah. it, it's just, it, it's execution, it's play design, it's um, everything you look for. I mean, you have mm -hmm. a wide receiver there. Obviously, it's, a, it's an athlete who's great once he has a ball in his hands, but you could have had anyone there. You could have mm -hmm. Braden Cass, you could have Silas Barr if you really yeah. wanted. It's yeah. wide open because it's such good play design, and it's just, it's tendency breakers. That, that's that's what's really a play here. Yeah, Bryson Green quite literally slipped out of the, uh, slipped Green. out, he, or Blaine Green, yeah, he's quite literally slipped out. Right. He, he, fe yeah. he almost fell, and then, <laughs> exactly. and then got back up and ran for a big gain, almost it, a touchdown, yeah. and then I believe next play they pounded it in, but yeah. we'll move on to the next play here. Chandler Morris is going to take the snap for TCU, and then Colby Harvey Appeal is going to come untouched through everybody for a sack on a blitz. Sadiq, let's hear it. Yeah, so every week we talk about Jim Knowles, third down defense, all these different packages and special things you see here. Here at third and 11, right? Mm -hmm. When OSU gets you, gets any team into a third and long situation, it's really going to be a hellish day. And here you see one of those packages we always talk about. Um, you got three defense alignment, but instead of just a standard three-man front, well, semi-standard with Ty Lace in the middle and you know Brock Martin, Colin Oliver on either side, he's stacking Brock Martin and Colin Oliver on the left side. You see a big gap because you know they're not going to run the ball. Mm -hmm. You got Ty Lacey playing nose tackle of sorts, and then you got the two middle linebackers who have piled up some you know good amount of sacks this year mm -hmm. uh, with Devin Harper and Malcolm Rodriguez. So when you're TCU, you see all this stack. You you expect stunts. You're expecting all these different things that Jim Knowles is going to do to you. Because, like, you see how close those linemen are on either mm -hmm. side, right? They're going to do something or another. And so you're, you're accounting for that, right? Five linemen, five defensive linemen, five offensive linemen. And you got the back to chip, right, on one of those guys. So they come down. But it's, it's that last second, right? Watch that spin down from Colby Harville-Pill. As the seconds are taken down, he times it well, gets in that middle. And then he comes straight. And watch three, the running back for TCU. He, I mean, I don't know if this is, you know, protection, deciding, okay, he's going to go block on Malcolm Rodriguez, Devin Harper on the tackle, help out there because weak or whatever. But for whatever reason, he just leaves Colby Harville appeal. And it's a lot to account for, so I get it, right? I mean, he's coming straight down, and I mean, once he's coming, he's got a lot of pursuit speed, and Colby Harville appeals like a missile mm -hmm. coming down. You see it here, right? I mean, you got, you see the gap between Tyler Lacey and Devin mm -hmm. Harper, Tyler Lacey and Colin Oliver on one side. And, and so the linemen have to slide, right? They have to account for those. And by the time you do that, it's way too late. And right there, Colby Harville's wide open. Obviously, Dio Mercado, uh, Dio Mercado or, um, should have been the one mm -hmm. uh, picking up Colby Harville appeal, but instead, he's off helping. And he has to, too, also. I think, was that Malcolm on the Edge? 
Mm -hmm. uh, they'll tackle whiffs on that, so he has to go help and pick up Chip there. And if he doesn't, Malcolm gets there. If he picks up Colby, Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm right. gets there. Right? It, it's one of those things. Right, when Colby Harbaugh Hill has you in your sights, has, has you in his sights, mm -hmm. probably not going to end well for you. He's pretty pretty surefire tackler, really good hips, right. and can, can bring you down pretty quick. And he did that, that to Chandler Morris, who at the time was 4 for 4 and TC was driving. So yeah. gets him off the field and gets that offense back out there. We'll go on to this next. We'll watch this one more time. Yeah, and you watch it, right? Devin Harper even does a good job mm -hmm. when him and Malcolm watch him on the, that side, right? They're so close together. And as soon as the snap goes, Devin Harper starts stepping toward the middle. Malcolm yep. goes outside, and you open up that gap. And right there, yeah, he's on you. Yep. Move on to this next play here. Spencer, uh, still in the first quarter, a little, a, a little over a minute left. First and ten for the Cowboys. Seven to three. Uh, they're gonna this play. They're gonna take Spencer. Taylor will take the snap, hand it off to Jalen Warren, and Jalen Warren will kind of weave his way in and out of some defenders for a pretty pretty sizable gain. So deep. What made this play successful? Yeah, you know we talk about Jalen Warren almost week in week out because of the great things he does on the field. But and you know the offensive line playing a lot better. But mm -hmm. here the offensive line obviously had an excellent game, right? And all three, four running backs had great games. Mm -hmm. But a reason, a big reason I want to highlight this one is because you're going to see the cutback, the vision, and the one-cut ability of Jalen Warren. You saw a lot of these with Dominic Richardson, Desmond Jackson as well. But here, you're going to see it pretty evidently, right? So it's a zone to the left, inside zone split. Logan Carter is coming across the formation. So Spencer gets it, hands it off to Warren. And Warren's going to that left side, right? It's almost mm -hmm. like... That, you obviously see it. It's all going to the strong side, that left side of the formation. That's the way Jalen Warren is running. But here it takes a big step in, and now he's wide open, right? Yep. That's that's vision. That's also one cut ability. It's not an easy cut, right? Mm -hmm. And zone running is an art. Like, that's the thing here. Like, they they ran, I think, almost all zone running plays in this game. Uh, and usually they mix it up with some power runs and some of those. But Jalen Warren, his vision is incredible. And when you're, yep. you're, you're running those zone runs, it's on the running back a lot of times to find that hole. And usually it's, you know, bouncing outside or finding within those tackles, guards. But instead, you sometimes find that cutback lane. And TCU, they're just overcommitting that side. The linebackers don't do a good job of anything, stay in their gaps. And so you got this gigantic line. And obviously, the, you know, right. you got this gigantic hole. And the line obviously does an incredible job blocking. And so Jalen Warren gets down, and then he shows the burst in the open field and protects himself. And on the second angle, you'll really see, like, from the uh, Lions side, right? Go watch this. You got all four of those guys going there. You got a huge hole here. D. Winters, number 13, doesn't fill that because they've seen this movie before. They yeah. see Jalen Warren going through that side, but it's the vision, right? The the seeing that the nothing's there and cutting it and then making a guy miss, yeah. which is just what he does uh, constantly and what he's been doing. And we're going to see another example of that in just a second uh, here, right? Near the goal line. Obviously, this is more subtle, but you're going to see some similar things where it's that zone run to the left, right? And D. Winters this time shoots the gap. Incredible linebacker gets right in there. This should be a loss of minus three, right? Loss right. of three yards. Instead, makes the two, three jump cuts and gets there, right? Here, vision, right side. And it's wide open. It looks easy after the play, but look at this, right? You're going left side. Imagine this, this mm -hmm. whole left side. This is what Jalen Warren's looking. This is where he's supposed to be running. But instead, he has, first off, the ability to make a guy miss in the backfield. And then watch these jump cuts. Subtle, right? Subtle. I mean, yeah. that's just, that's beautiful. Yeah, his jump cuts are uh, to the elite level, and mm -hmm. his vision, his vision in this game especially yeah. was, was elite. He, there were numerous times where he just one, two jump cut, and then gone. Exactly. And, and, then, and it's, like, it's like that, right? You're blocking on one side, and you just understand. I mean, this is what, what the, not mm -hmm. just an offensive line blocking, but what the running back gives you. Right. It's crazy to think that he was running back probably number four, right. arguably, coming yep. into the year. Now he's easily number one with his elite vision who's probably yes. gonna yeah. he's probably gonna get signed to an NFL roster if, sure. if I had I mean if I and, and then, imagine it. Yeah, I mean you see it's just that cutback, that subtle ability and then he's in the he's in the end zone there's not a single person touching yeah. him. Alright, so this play here, uh Spencer is gonna take the snap. He's gonna find Blaine Green who again lined up a cowboy back for a touchdown. But we're gonna pull a little audible this time. I think I'm gonna break this one down. So we got Tay Martin and Brandon Presley stacked down low. Again, Blaine Green lined up as H back here, which you know of course he is. And he, he's he got Logan Carter right in front of him. So Logan Carter's on the field this time. Mm -hmm. So he got two Cowboy backs on the field. Normally it'll be Logan Carter, Silas Barr, or Logan Carter, Braden Cassidy. Instead, it's Blaine Green. And he's going to go out. He's going to hit a little a long, a pretty long slant here. And, sorry. And then the entire time, they're going to sell the zone run again. What, we've been, what you've been talking about this whole time. They're going to sell the zone run, and TCU bites. And you have no, you only have, you have no safeties deep, except for this one guy who lined up over Tay and Brennan. And he's going to come in too. And this whole right side, of the, right side of the field is going to be open. One on one coverage. Blaine versus his corner. He's going to beat his corner he's, like, pretty easily. And once he, once he misses that, once the corner misses that tackle, Blaine Green's into the end zone wide open. But again, the biggest part of this was the, the fact that he's on H back. He beats his corner. And that's what he brings, lining up an H back, is he's going to bring the speed that a normal cowboy back right. would not. 
And then they don't have any safeties deep, and Spinter sees that, pulls it, finds him on the slant, and goes in for the end zone. Yeah, you see here, right? He was able to spread out the defense this whole time. And most importantly, Spinter was able to step up in the pocket, something he really wasn't able to do most of last season. He hadn't yeah. really shown a great pocket awareness his whole career, really. But these last four games that you were talking about, he's really improved. You can see the maturity start going. Logan Carter looking like he's starting to run a little bit. But um, but you see him step up in the pocket. He's going to – Danny Galuski going to ha have one guy, but then move to another guy and miss on him. And he's going to step up in the pocket. Instead of you know running or scampering or getting tr getting worried or whatever, getting mm -hmm. nervous, he's going to step up with the majority of a junior quarterback that he is, find, find Blaine Green making his cut, perfect timing on both the route and the throw, and this play could not have been more well designed from Casey Dunn and Mike Gutty and the, that offensive staff. Yeah, you talk about tendency breakers, right? What has mm -hmm. OSU done all season? They've run the ball, yeah. and instead you're you're running that play action. And you're right. I mean, this is the maturity for like 14 different reasons. Mm -hmm. You talk about Spencer stepping up. Yeah, you see him step up, right? But it's not just him stepping up, you know, just to stay in the pocket. It's because he recognizes the coverage. He knows yep. if he holds down that ball for another half second, Blaine Green's gonna shine wide open because mm -hmm. that shell. There's no safety there, and yeah, that's great, great decision making. Yeah, and you know it's it's more this is not very often OSU's been throwing the deep ball, and this wasn't a deep ball per se, it wasn't you know streak route or anything, but it was it was farther down the field than they normally mm -hmm. throw. They normally make their living on these short throws mm -hmm. after the run, like that bubble screen you saw, right. a lot of screen passes, a lot of short like quick dig routes and stuff like that. But you know you go a little deeper on a third and four play nonetheless late in the first half, and you're gonna extend the lead to twenty to three before halftime, which is even more important than the, you know you really spread out this lead before it even gets going. Right. Yeah. So early on, we saw so many. Um jump balls thrown, which obviously mm -hmm. are great, and you should be when you're throwing yeah. to Tay Martin and you know Bryson Green and these guys. But Gundy talked about early on, right, the lack of just them not hitting on their concepts. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about drives and spots and flood and whatever, they're, they weren't executing it properly. A lot of that's youth and so on. But now you see them more and more, and each week you see some of these plays and you see some of these uh, drives downfield, and it's mixing in well mm -hmm. with that run game. But, yeah, there's something to be said about playing Green playing tight end. Yeah. I mean, this is just incredible, again, so for much. 14 different reasons, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's it's creativity, but it also is execution. When you watch mm -hmm. Blaine Green, I was not just watching for how he's as a receiver because we know he can catch, right? Yeah. What it is is the blocking. He's playing there. He's playing tight end, and he's making those blocks and he's executing them all. He's mm -hmm. not. He wasn't. At least I didn't see a single block where he kind of screwed up. Um, and that's great, right? Because yeah. there's a risk with putting in yeah, not exactly, just a yeah. wide receiver, but, but a young yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, and it helps that you're carving him out a spot for all these young receivers because you have Jane Bray. Mm -hmm. Who's too small to play H back? You have his brother. You have Blaine's brother Bryson, who's been really well as a uh, receiver and kind of needs to step into that role. Mm -hmm. You got Brennan Presley at slot, who's most definitely too small to play H back, and then Tay Martin, who's obviously a receiver oh. one. So you got all the, and Rashad Owens, yeah. and you're missing all these guys. You know, you have all these guys, and you're finding roles. And with Brendan Cassidy down, they need another guy who can catch the ball to step in, unlike Silas Barr. So you have that, right? And it's just like such a. Um it's like you never think about starting a wide receiver mm -hmm. at tight end, right? It's just not, not a thought that ever crosses your mind. Yep. But it's the fact that Mike Gundy and this coaching staff can adapt. When you lose that Braden Cassidy, you bring back a Logan mm -hmm. Carter who's probably not 100%. Right. And you're able to move a guy within a week who probably, I mean, I don't know if he ever practiced that prior to this because yeah. we're not in there. But, I mean, you, you can't imagine that he has too much experience there. But it's the ability to have him learn the playbook so quickly, and which obviously speaks to his um, just knowledge as well and the ability to execute it there i mean i don't know if you ever played tight end in high school i would assume not <laughs> probably not no. but yeah it's like it's like some it's not just that it's it's the routes he runs when you run as a wide receiver versus a tight end there's differences and nuances there's all these different things and it's it's you're you're making do it's really like a mm -hmm. next next man up mentality right when you're mm -hmm. losing guys and you're you're making do however you can yeah well all in all osu wins this game pretty handily 63 17 again moves to 9-1 they got texas tech this week which i'm sure will bring some great plays all in all, pretty well-called game from Casey Dunn. Uh, pretty clean, clean game from OSU. But we'll be back next week. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been Chris Becker, Sadiq Tuma, the Okali Film Room.